Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. This is the first video that I have made on the toilet. Well, not on, on the toilet, obviously. <sighs> Just a handy place to sit to show you what's in the bath. In the bath, I have my argon gas because it's not been the best of weekends this weekend. Um, everything I've tried to do hasn't gone as well as it could have done and my usual troop of helpers have, have been waylaid with either the flu or some kind of lurgy so Mr Bob's not been very well my mate who does the uh, stainless steel pipes for uh, Muller and, and dairy type stuff he's not been very well either so it's just been little old me and although I have plenty of time to tinker everything I've touched this week seems to have gone a bit wrong so this this is the argon cylinder off my TIG welder the two gauges here this one gives us the pressure in the tank this one gives us the, the pressure or the flow that goes out to the welder and there's a little flow meter here that sort of helps to see what's flowing so as I've got this main regulator shut off, if I open the supply from the uh, cylinder itself, this gauge should go up, this gauge shouldn't move, and everything under the water shouldn't allow any gas to escape. But when I turned it on earlier to do a bit of welding, I could hear this horrible kind of shh sound, and that was expensive argon just escaping. There you go, there it is. That's how you make a jacuzzi. Unfortunately though, even when uh, I've got it turned down as low as I can get it without turning off. I can't quite see where the bubbles are escaping from. So it, I think it's either this this gauge itself or the regulator or where the gauge screws into the regulator. I thought having it under the water would help, but there's just too much pressure to really reliably see what's going on under the sea of bubbles. And however, however light I uh, open the valve, it doesn't seem to show me any more than that. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a pain. I know you're probably not supposed to put these underwater and apparently the missus says you're not supposed to put them in the bath either, but um, well, I'm sure that's all right. Um, they can dry out anyway. So it's gonna be a trip to the uh, gas weld shop and unfortunately they're only open nine to five, Monday to Friday. So um, hobbyists and, and weekend warriors like me will have to take a day off work before we can get that fixed. But I did manage to get over to my mate Matt's and he did, he did do a bit of welding for me. So I'm gonna teleport down to the garage now and show you what I have managed to do this weekend. Here we are back in the garage and it really doesn't look like it, but there's almost a day's worth of work right there. Getting this sprocket welded onto that tiny little boss there putting the boss on the MIFID, trying to machine it, I had a problem with the drive belts on the MIFID, so I had to sort those out first. It's one of those long-term things where uh, over, over time the belt starts to rub and you think, I'll, I'll get round to that one day, I'll get round to that one day, until eventually the belt breaks and you realise that you probably should have got round to it earlier. So I had to do a, a bit of messing around on that, and then I've just explained upstairs in the bathroom what happened to the gas from the welder, so the the trusty TIG welder down there, I couldn't couldn't use that, so I had to take it around to my mates, and of course then you need to have a beer and look at their projects, and, and there's some fantastic going on, uh, work going on in the local sheds, and I should probably do a video about that as well. So I finally got that on with a keyway cut, uh, and that's a nice fit on that shaft there, so that's one half of it. The uh, spacer that's been made in here, in the other shed, I haven't got around to that yet, but I think Bob's doing that, and he probably wants me to uh, leaving to it so so that's really about as far as progress goes on on project hercules but i did give the mifid a bit of tlc and the main thing about this is that when i turn it on now that ting 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 noise is now silent the pulley on the side is no longer touching the side of the the belt it's not making that that ting 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 noise and when you engage it and you turn it on, it's not going squeak, squeak, squeak either because it's got a nice new belt in. One of those jobs that I should have done a long time ago, but um, never quite got around to. And uh, and it's good. I like to give the old machines a bit of TLC now and then. And it's a lesson for me to uh, do a bit more on the others. That's about it for this weekend. Rather disappointing, but you'll notice there are some pretty Christmas lights up. So there's usually another little couple of jobs around the house that need to be done, dogs to be walked, that kind of thing. I had a phone call from a guy in New York, a nice guy by, by arrangement. So he got a, a few questions to ask. 
and uh, and that's about it for the weekend so that's the update for now as usual thanks for watching next weekend hopefully i'll get a bit more done